we can start with the good stuff or like things that are just like holy crap like it's past the bar exam where are the aliens and i i, I think if, if anyone would know about aliens on earth it would probably be me i would um, think yeah i'm like you know if this is what they're giving us now and it's this powerful then imagine what they're using Get a whole bunch of uh, gemstones out the ground, polish them a little bit, get some silverware, put a coin in there, and you start seeing it levitate. Write me an essay. That's a 13th rule for Beyond Order. And yet our brothers and sisters still in a matrix just like have no, they probably won't understand what we're saying today. Control autonomous weapons and more. And we're still in the very early stages. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> Good to see you, Chris. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for letting me on today. Oh, I tell you what, mate. This is just the beautiful thing about connecting with people that are like on the same wavelength as you. E even in the last 40 years, we've gone from having, say, 80% of nature. We're down to like 43% of it now. All those species that we've killed, we've wiped out, that they probably took billions of years to develop and grow, and we've wiped them out in like 40 years. How did you become an awake individual that's gone on this journey? I guess it would have to be, I grew an obsession with this. I grew a passion to want to understand as literally as much as possible. Everybody is going to sit here and say, well, you can't know everything. And that's not exactly my focus or like my goal when you're now trying to place that limit of how much you can know for someone else it's like how the old russian uh the russian saying of like when you put a potato in boiling water it might soften but you put the egg in it's gonna harden what you're gonna get for one person and what you're gonna get for another are gonna most likely be two different things so a lot of people will place these limits on themselves as much as you'll have like you said these power structures these fictitious honestly meta dead structures running their lives so i just wanted to learn everything from the most ancient deepest roots possible if that meant christianity if that meant buddhism if that meant shinto tao i mean anything you name it i went to so many different so many different uh, research papers, so many different types of scientific fields just to try and understand what it means to be human. I want to be able to answer that in as many ways as possible, to be able to reach as many people as possible so that, hey, they want to they wanna make a one world government. We got a one world body of people that are completely awakened in a state of awareness and complete sovereign being. We need to invert back what they've inverted from us essentially all of this knowledge i'm just trying to set it back the way it was i guess simplest way i could put it and that's that's gonna mean i got all of my books literally around me here like it's over 80 books by the time i'm dead it'll probably be over 500 like probably even more than that but it wouldn't just be for me it would be a homestead so that literally everybody could have knowledge like this at their disposal and i you see my profile i post about it on the regular one day it'll be posting about ai the next it's about donald trump the next it's about sacred geometry and that the next it's about yahweh i mean you're gonna get a lot of stuff out of me but when people take the time to look at all of this in front of them and not just take it from me this is where you grow this awakening at truly you have the knowledge like you do that is a lot of times directly in the field, directly in the line of what's happening. You're you just had what was it, Gary McKinnon just a couple of just a couple episodes ago or something mm -hmm. like that. Dude, like that 
there's there's not much more I got to say for that. Like, this is building a knowledge fear or like a collective pool of just experience, knowledge, awakening that literally anybody can tap into. I just want to join in that. You're in it. So many people are already in it. We just have to keep our focus there. That's that's what that's what I want to do with all of this. If we go from the perspective of eternal life, that the, we're the universe experience in itself, this knowledge is, you know, it's it's there for infinity, isn't it? It's there for future generations. It's not just what you and I do in this life. I don't know what I don't, I don't even want to call it a body of information. More like an understanding that there's just so many incredible questions and answers and, and it can be so good. And I think the elites, I think one of their kind of failures is they seem to just have one MO, mm. one modus operandi. Like they, they try and steer people like this and it's worked so far, you know, because mm -hmm. most people just believe what they see on the TV. And their system has worked. What is it uh, David Icke says? Um, problem, reaction, solution. And that is all they do. They just do problem. You know, it was health shit for three. And then, then it's going to be alien. And then it, uh, what, whatever. The red peril and communism, Vietnam. Da, da. Before that, it was, oh, the, the scourge of Hitler is going to take you. And, and it's a... It's the same regurgitated cycle of predicted programming. Yeah, yeah. it's like a, a limited hangout. I think once people crack it and realize they've got so much more to gain by not living in bull fear all the time, what prompted you, Blaine, to read these books then? I guess it might be what it might be the first part you said. Something was missing. Um, God bless my family. God bless my parents. I love them to death. All, all four of mine. I, I even have two step parents that truly do care about me and are in my life. I'm, I'm blessed enough to have good parents. Not many people do. They mm -hmm. are, I would, I would, if I had to give it like a, a category, like pretty fundamentalist, kind of like verging on the line of like non non denominational Christian, evangelical along that line. And, just getting introduced to that as a kid, I was very intrigued by just the ancient world. And to be able to hear that perspective now was really astounding to me. And just the more that I looked into it, the more that just, it wasn't, it wasn't as simple, I guess, as what people were giving it off to be. I just felt that there was something with this, but then I always questioned how would there be an entire world of people that have their own different systems, they have their own cultures, they have their own ideologies, their rituals, everything else, their own histories, and yet you can have so many people, let's just get right into it, just be cursed, completely forgotten, whatever, like however you got to look at it. There's just one specific true way, and... Anybody else is just going to perish for eternity for it. Now, I understand that a lot of people have these views. I just wanted to see how this stacked up to the rest of the world, I guess you could say. Not in a sense of like, is this true or is it, or is it not? More or less, like, where did all of these come from? Where did the idea at all come up that some fiery eternal pit of damnation is waiting for you or that some old bearded guy in the sky with his hands over the buttons of reality is gonna save you for all of eternity like i i was so intrigued by that but then at the same time i didn't know if i wanted to believe it because some of the things i saw in the church system as amazing as church and religious structure can be we do have the other end of it that I think we're only just now starting to see come to light. I mean, all one word I got to say is the Vatican. That's that's enough. <laughs> like, so it was just trying to learn as many different cultures as I could. And I mean, you're going to end up coming across like ancient Egypt, ancient India, China, 
practically anywhere in the world, I, I mean, you're going to be able to find massive, massive truths that don't just upend our way of understanding, like, ancients back then, but how we understand ourselves today and understand, like, how we're going to be progressing in the future. Mm -hmm. So if that means it's going to be Jesus coming back, if that means it's, you know... Zoroaster, or I mean, I, I could name a whole bunch of names. It's just, it was eventually realizing that too many of these were formed under a religious syncretism, and practically everything else, like you were saying, follows along that same sort of patternization. That's when it all just clicked for me. It's just like I, I threw the word coincidence out the door that day. Like it, there's no way. Like you said, like sacred geometry or uh, anything like that. It's like you can't shy away from this stuff yet still think that you have an idea of the truth, no matter what it is you're viewing, no matter what religious scripture, no matter what. Like if you're not stacking it up to the rest of history and seeing how it lines up, like I don't know what you're doing with it. You're only going to be stroking a negative ego. You're only going to be stroking something that wasn't really going to be built for your progression to begin with. That's their exploitation, I feel like. If anybody wanted to have an idea of what the devil or any of this is, it's an unbridled ego. That's the simple as I could put it. Like, every culture's got that issue. Every religion's got that issue. Like, I mean, it seems like even the gods that they created have that issue because they're painting us like all of it is it's just we got to find a way to learn that language not just the fact that it's a control mechanism but it just breeds fear any religion you know or any understanding of the deeper if we can call it the godhead of which i feel i i have an equal share um because we're manifestation of the everything, the all that, that, you know, it's one, it's one system. There's no, like, you know, here's, here's the, the here's the thing here, but there's a God out here and he's sat on his cloud and he's doing all this. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, but my, my thing is, is that, oh my God, they preach boredom. You know, when we was kids, we had to go to church. It was so boring. I could not wait to get out there and go fishing or go on my bike. And then they preach nonsense because they literally preach the scriptures, literally like people walking on water and, and not, not explaining like the allegory, you know, yeah. behind, be, behind that. And, but most of all, they preach fear. And yet the highest vibration is love. <laughs> so you got a question like, what are these people doing? <laughs> and it, and who are they working for? And well, I think, I think we know who they work for. Yeah. And it's, it's in the symbolism that they've created for all of us to latch onto. That's how we understand like that. It's controlling us. Like, I don't even know if I want to say the, the letter, but um, a specific letter of the alphabet told us that symbolism will be their downfall. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you support that letter of the alphabet or not, or the orange man, like, it yeah, doesn't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, your, like, your, your, your use of code words is good. Yeah, like, <laughs> these sort of truths are, like, as sensitive, of course, like you're saying, as they can be. Like, these sort of truths you have to expose yourself to it enough so that you can have like a large enough voice to combat all of the predictive programming, the fake news, all that that they're giving people. If it's not like combating enough to the point where you start to have that dualistic sense of like, I don't understand what I'm doing, but I know that I need to change something. That's when that process starts. Inevitably, a fear of darkness, a fear of isolation, a fear of 
I mean, you said it, fear. I think inevitably darkness is something that humanity will have to contend with, I think, for the rest of time. But in the sense that we don't understand darkness. Where does a seed grow? In the ground, in darkness. Where does a baby grow? In the womb, in darkness. Mm. Like, we don't think about darkness in a simple, pragmatic way. People say it's just like, it's just like no light or no color. It's, you're talking about a literal void. You're talking about where the spiritual comes into the physical. You can't see spiritual energy. Like, in the sense that, like, as much as some people might be able to see auras and all that other stuff, like, with your own five senses, you can't see this stuff. This is your masculine way of being. So, you see a patriarchy forming where this world is practically ran by us, men. And then you see, I mean, everything with industrialization. We're seeing everything with pragmatic, logical thinking. That is all one side of the brain. So most people are living such absurd lives because they're living on one side of the brain entirely. And it's destroying their health. It's destroying their nervous system, their immune system, everything. I mean, if up here isn't working right, everything else is just going to fall down with it. So if you're not filling it with love, forgiveness, mindfulness, compassion, like if all you're feeding it is fear and division and it has to be my way, it has to be this way, like all you're going to get is karma smacking you back in the face tenfold. Yeah. Like it's we, we can add to that anxiety and fear and if there ever was a Garden of Eden scenario, which friends at home, I'm not suggesting there was, I'm sure it's allegory for Adam being the atom and Eve being the, the proton or the neutron, or was it proton and new and the, 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 the grand. Yeah. You got, you got the premise essentially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like the beginning of life basically, but, but, but there's, um, there's the snake. I'm not even going to say the devil because that's irrelevant, but there's an entity in there and he's saying, look guys, I'm going to give you everything, right? You've got the human consciousness. You've got the ability of self-reflection. You've got the ability to decide your destiny, but here's the thing. It will come at a cost. Mm. There will be those that just fall by the wayside. The, the whole thing with a spiritual journey is like, I think the best way to help these individuals is just to help yourself and to live your life and be, be as uh, pure to spirit as you can and as kind as you can and to get rid of the vices and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because those people you mentioned that are living in the gluttony, the greed, the nine to five job, the the not not that there's anything wrong with working folks. I mean that like just yeah. to like do that every day of your life. Exactly. Then you retire and then five years later you die. That that's the sum total of your experience in 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 this form on this planet. It is sad, but this is a problem with, like, capitalism. Is it? It's convinced people that they've like they've got enough, isn't it? You know, it, it, that, that they've got the two cars, they've got the house, they're going to get this job position next month. The kids are in school. Da 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 da. da. Like, yeah, we made it in life, and it's 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 understanding that there's. There's a, a different dimension, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And the fact, different dimension, good way of putting it. And I think you even mentioned it at the very beginning of this. We are all living in the same, I guess you can say, like, realm, world. I mean, if, if people had to go into super specifics about dimension and whatever else, you're getting into quantum computing and math and all that other stuff. But 
I mean, when it comes to where we are now, there is definitely a split occurring. You have those who support the Matrix and then those who don't. Like, it's starting to get completely binary now. Um, and you mentioned, like, the Garden of Eden scenario and the serpent tempt uh, tempting Eve and what it could mean. And I think even, like, as much as that's all important, you mentioned the big part. The fact that, like, we're working for all of this. And what did God say to Adam when he ate of the fruit that he was now forced to tend to the fields and work from the dust for the rest of his life? Look at where we all are now. If we have to believe that some, like, the first two people that were ever, ever created for simply wanting to have knowledge of their existence, knowledge of free will, and just being able to understand that your consequences mean something. Daddy God isn't going to watch over you for every single little thing. You're going to have to pick up your own bootstraps and defend for yourself at some point. You're going to have to learn and you're going to have to start thinking for yourself. And, and on the Bible and on like how people like view the way that they want to live versus the way that, say, their Bible is telling them to. I see a major difference today, even in like just the most fundamentalist groups you can imagine. People are listening to freaking Paradise Lost and Paradise Regained by John Milton and then freaking Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy. Like, they'll listen to those two, but then their own Bible. It, it, it doesn't even remotely resemble what they believe in or how they put things together. So it's not even just that you have all of these structures manipulating people. They've now degraded them to the point where they don't even know how to follow it anymore. They're just mindless. Like, it's now at a point where, yeah, you're looking at two different dimensions of people now. Me and you that can have these sort of conversations and then you have others that are too completely triggered to even remotely consider that they're wrong about them mm. me and you could disagree on a topic but we know that what we're contributing and what we're reciprocating is a whole lot more than that on the other end of it you got people screaming about pronouns don't 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 make me be that person don't don't like i what what can you say it, there's a major difference in priorities. There's a major difference in values. Like, and you're now starting to see the detriment of what that looks like. It, it's, it's just getting crazy out here now. Honestly, crazy. It's absurd. Yeah, the division. This is one of the, when I say their MO is really simple. It's problem, reaction, solution, but it's also just dividing control. Um, everyone's pronouns should just be massive legend. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is it, right? Oh man, I got and one, you can see it. I'm I'm talking to the people out here now that that you know you're starting to get this bullshit and you're starting to awaken a bit, and you see that Kathy in the office. You know she's 35. She's got three kids. She's gone back to work for the third time. You know, it's really important to her to have her pronouns. Why? She doesn't know why. She's just copying the bullshit that she sees in the Matrix, and she thinks that that makes her, like, cool. My pronouns are, you know, he and she or she and her. Or <laughs> The definition of rebellion has completely been lost. Yeah, a complete loss of the fact that we're so much more. <laughs> we are the universe experiencing itself. So put universe. <laughs> I think you're only allowed two pronouns, but universe <laughs> experiencing. That's a be better way of uh, describing yourself. But of course, putting yourself in these little boxes is what they love, isn't it? And then they set these little boxes up against the other little boxes and you have race riots and, and, and you know. It's the whole idea of like this, like you're supposed to tolerate quote unquote someone else or you're supposed to accept this or you're supposed to like 
give something up to it because they were an inferior or a minority or something like that. It's as if they're trying to paint every single person in every single group and shoving words in their mouth. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's all they're doing. Um, if people want to believe that, uh, G- Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Yahuwah, however you got to call that dude. If people want to believe that he existed, then you have to believe that that man has had more words shoved in his mouth than any other human being that has ever existed. Like, it's it's not even close. Like, if we can't make a proper understanding of history, then imagine how we're going to be now. And all they've done, like you said, is just keep us dumb and docile. And then whenever they've had to reset everything because people like us have started to question and push for things, we evolve past the the restraints that they wanted us to be in. Now suddenly we're seeing a whole bunch of cataclysms. I don't think they would have called it climate change back in, I don't know, Atlantis's time, but I can guarantee you AI definitely had something to do with it. I can guarantee you a lot of these older spiritual knowledges that come from like the the druids or so many of these other secret societies like where uh freemasonry came from or any of the other uh mystic abrahamic traditions like we can't understand the past so we're stuck in the present fighting for a way to survive in the future like we're, we're so completely lost and i mean even us in this movement there is still a lot of like back and forth and tribalism and cultism. And it's just, we're all sitting here essentially, well, not all of us, a good amount of us are trying to sit here and actually keep a rebellious movement growing, something concise, something that is actually going to bring something to all of humanity. And then you have people that just have their own ends. They have their own means. They have their own goals. Like, I would say right now, if I had every single human being on the planet watching this right now, I would just simply say that you have two choices if you want to survive this decade. You are either going to have to face the matrix and like bring a fight to the system, or you're going to have to learn a way how to survive or avoid it. Like Simple as that. Either you're going to have to go off grid and you're going to have to like find your own means, build your own way, and... Let the New World Order civil, uh, sizzle itself out and let whoever else actually wants to bring a fight to it, bring it, and then rebuild civilization from there. Like, I, I think we're at the point now where it's like you were saying, um, the best thing that we can do for them is to simply just save ourselves. I mean, if you have to have the belief that they're, they'll be reincarnating at some point again or uh, they'll be going somewhere else, I mean... Mm-hmm you would still be creating a space for earth to still have this spiritual purpose. So inevitably what we're doing is going to mean a whole lot more than just conspiracy theories and just resetting history. We are literally reevaluating what it means to be human. Like every single person should be thinking about what that means and what they think they know. Like, it's now going to get to a point where you're going to have people that are aware of what's happening like me and you. We'll be doing our own thing, but then you're going to have these steady masses of people that are going to start going crazy. I mean, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what people are going to do. That's the sort of like uneasiness about, you know, they no longer have this matrix control over them, but now they're completely psychotic. It's just... How are we going to survive? What are we going to do considering that we actually know what's going on? Yeah. Have you ever seen that George Carlin sketch when it's the end of the earth? I'm going to sit there laughing my ass off when everyone burns in hell. (laughs) I'm not. It was one of the greatest, man. Friends, I'm I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that we're gloating at that at all. I'm just saying that it it, it kind of sums up. He's he's trying to awaken people with the fact that, oh, my God, most people are so brainwashed. They're just going to lead us into hell. And, and it's not a criticism of them because I used to be one of those people 
it's not even like on a physical plane because if I thought I could go to, I don't know, some place in Alaska and build my cabin, and I'd love to do that as a single guy. I I'd be quite happy, make my fire every day, go and you know, shoot a shoot an animal to eat for lunch, <laughs> that or gather some herbs, whatever. That's kind of a limited hangout because one, if you have family and you have kids. Well, they've got no one to like get married to, have they? <laughs> so it kind of doesn't really work that well. Obviously, you've got to save yourself first from the inside out, from every molecule in your being, I think, has to connect with spirit just to realize you are everything. You you, you know, this is this is a, a big savior that you can't die. Only in this physical body will wear away one day and you'll become other forms of life and that's a big understanding you know when you look at the tree of life from the kabbalah perspective and you got the three pillars mm -hmm. two short pillars on the outside one the god pillar in the middle I, I don't know if i even say that correctly but i watched a great video lately and it's saying how Lucifer is the left hand pillar and by Lucifer I don't mean like a negative not Satan but mm -hmm. the light bringer you know the 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 beings that we, yeah. that we can't understand that bring light into your life that tell you when to do good shit and this is going to be good for you and follow that and then you've got the middle and if you call that the godhead whatever that's you know that is like source Mm -hmm. And then you've got the right pillar, which is kind of like your bad bastards. They they want to anchor you in materialism. They want you to, you know, drive a gas guzzling car. They want you to, you know, be shoving your face full of food and, you know, watching all these websites online and all this kind of, you know, all this stuff. And that the secret is to get that balance in the middle of life um i don't know if that means anything blaine but it's it's i love this stuff well it, you got on you got on a lot of important things and i would say when it comes to uh you referencing the tree of life and the three pillars a lot of different names for all of them but they were based on like the pillars of uh yakim and boaz uh, yes. uh free Maiden. Freemason, and, yeah. And it would be like the like the pillar of strength or like the pillar of like justice or something like that. And then you had like the pillar of like mercy or something along that end. Mm -hmm. When you look at the top three, that's I guess the Kabbalah's way in in one way, the Kabbalah's tried to understand the Godhead, that Trinity aspect. Um you have Keter at the top. And then you would have Chakma and Bina. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Chakma is the one that was considered to be uh, Jesus. And then Bina was considered to be the Holy Spirit. What everybody needs to understand that the Holy Spirit is a feminine deity. In the Hebrew scriptures, the, the name given... Oh, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head now. Great. But um, it was given a feminine adjective as well as Yahweh or Jehovah given the masculine. The idea, I only just learned about this not too long ago. Hmm. The fact that you have people in the Bible, I think it was like 60 or 70 elders that supposedly had a meal with Jehovah. Moses saw Jehovah or Yahweh like, as if it was face to face as a friend, the Bible says. You have people in the Bible that have seen the face of Jehovah, and the Bible proves it. But then Jesus comes around and says, No one has seen the face or, of my father or heard, my fa uh, heard the voice of my father before. So that's interesting. And people want to just immediately assume that that's just a biblical contradiction. And I, there's plenty out there, but this isn't one of them. It's that. 
kind of like when you were saying before about like allegory and the spiritual message that is being given, they don't understand the esoteric and the Gnostic principles that people like Yeshua, people like Paul were saying. Like Paul was very much Gnostic. Jesus was a profound Gnostic. Like if you don't have an understanding of some of the vocabulary that go into some of this or like simply understanding why they revered water so much or why they had trinities in practically every religion. If you look at alchemy, you have salt, sulfur and mercury as the trinity of essentially physical manifestation. You look at the proton, uh, nucleus and the neutron of an atom like you were describing before same idea you see this mirrored out across the entire world they're megalithic structures all lined up on ley lines you have i I mean i'm just gonna start spitting off at this point but like Mm. you have so many you have so many different layered truths that all kind of like lay on top of one another that are all being converged into like one awakening, like six, seven, eight thousand years of knowledge that are like being compiled into one. They're not sitting here using the vocabulary of quantum physics and, you know, whatever else like we're using today for them to understand that alchemy meant something, for them to understand that their spirituality meant something and how they viewed this fleshly experience wasn't exactly like patty cake campfire sing along happy like even they understood that even with the free energy they were using even with all of the expansions and evolution that they had they knew how easily it was to destroy everything in a snap of a finger like we just don't believe we have that risk anymore simply just because i'd say for starts western and american exceptionalism and then you have really instant communication i mean think of how good we feel simply because we can talk like this from across Mm -hmm. the world like we've grown an insane ego from technology and where has been our growth in the feminine aspect of our existence our spirituality basically dead we no longer have the feminine deity and in in, uh, attributed to the Holy Spirit anymore. It's just somebody like you. You have you have so many different truths to the point where the people that are trying to refute this, you don't even have an awareness or a knowledge of what's being said. And you're just still denying and you're still denying it. But that, that's where I hate when people just say that. The Bible is the only truth or like Jesus and Yahweh are like the only truth or like my other religion is the only truth. Absolutely not. You are not just going to sit here and discount tens of billions of people's experiences just because you want to believe some guy in devil horns is going to poke you in the ass someday. Like... (laughs) <laughs> like that like i would rather at the very least be wrong about so many of these different religions and then realize that hey maybe one of them was the right way because i attempted to speak to all of them i think that's the important part you're not just interacting with this information you're going to the very people that believe in this who have practiced these things in their family for thousands of years the bible does not have that there is a million different changes that went on in the hebrew scriptures and practically everything we have today just within the past 400 years i mean we are so lost Uh, i'll get off my rant there but like we are so lost and the absurdity now is like unbearable Mm -hmm. like it's it's almost impossible to want to sit here in this 3d experience knowing that you got somewhere else to go to like it's crazy it's crazy yes you summed it up really well um i really hang on i'm gonna show you my dictionaries i think i might have messaged you about these but 
like this really helped me on my journey. It was uh Crap. I got this from a, a, a YouTuber called John St. Julian, who's absolutely brilliant. And this is amazing. I don't have anything like this. Wow. Yeah. These are quite expensive. I think you can get a cheaper version. This is two, like I've got <laughs> two volumes, right? But what it really helped me to do was um, just understand the language in the scripture. So, for yeah. example, lion means ego, right? So when you ever hear people fighting a lion, he's talking about like getting on top of your ego. When he's talking about like bread, it's talking about like the Holy Spirit, like your Kundalini or your, your sacred oil, you know, this, this, um, uh, bio biological experience, um, that you should have if you live in impurity. And I love that, you know, I love it. And it, it, obviously makes you then look at any religion where, where is any religion talking about that bullshit what i just said that lion means ego right there's no religion ever going to tell you that right they're going to start telling you that you know blokes can walk on water and women can have babies without getting pregnant and and you know it's yeah it's meant a hope it's meant a whole lot to my life and it's meant a lot knowing that these secrets have been encoded for thousands of years. I don't know how far the scriptures go back. I literally don't know. And I reckon before our scriptures, there was probably scriptures from other, <laughs> other civilizations that what, here's a question for your blame, right? Our personally, when they tell us, uh, civilization came out of Africa 80,000 years ago. Like, I just laugh at that. Uh, so I think, I. I think our evolution was so clever uh, and evolution is so slow. If indeed there is evolution and I'm not, you know, this is just my understanding on my journey so far, but I reckon we've been here for billions of, you know, millions of years um, I think before us, civilizations have come and gone. But what I wonder is, like, how many civilizations could have come and gone when you bear in mind that the sun fuels this planet, you know, provides the heat, which creates the forest, which creates the oxygen, da 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 da, you know, heats the ocean. Like, do we have any idea how long this this time period could have been? Okay. There's a couple of different theories that I've heard. And a lot oh man. A lot of this is some of what Adolf Hitler was looking into with the Aryan races and whatnot. Some of this he discovered like through some of his own research and what the SS was getting into. So even uh, Helena Blavatsky, the one who wrote Isis Unveiled and uh, The Secret Doctrine, um, she's responsible for uh, like a large part in um, Theosophy and uh, Rudolf Steiner and whatnot. But they've looked at like cataclysms like Atlantis, um, other major astrological uh, placements and other times in history where you saw major events form like this i don't know how far they go back but we're yeah easily talking easily tens of thousands of years and mm -hmm. we're if we're talking about a certain genetic type of human because how we are today was not even remotely the same twenty thousand years ago our understanding of like the homo arachnid, the homo sapien, like all those other types of like human, we don't have the greatest understanding of because our technology is limited. And plus the very genetic material that you're, you're trying to look at has long since evolved. So you're not going to be able to like go into a human and then just turn back the clock. 
like 300 million years. You can't just do that. So th this is where the whole UFO debate and all this other stuff truly start to get to a head because you realize the UFO debate and the spiritual religious stuff are a whole lot more interconnected than what we perceive or what we think. And when we're talking about how the human evolution formed genetically, especially there is no looking away from the Sumerian tablet explanation of how humanity formed. And then let's be honest, Genesis and the Bible, just ripping it from it. Like we were genetically altered. They had, they used the word Nephilim or Elohim in the Bible to like understand what happened like giants and whatever else. But then these other beings that were around that were calling human, were, we just designated it to like certain tribes or whatever else. And, oh, they worship some other God. They're just some lost tribes. Um, there's a lot more to it than that. We know that for sure. So when we're going to try and understand where we genetically come from, you're going to find a hybridized genetic code. That blueprint is not, in our case, naturally occurring to this realm or to this earth. So the main hypothesis that I'm going off of right now is that we are a genetic makeup of multiple different races and Homo sapiens were simply just the the operating table for it where we were given their image. We were made in their image. Uh, we are more than definitely reptilian. Uh, I I'm just going to use that word. I'm just going to flat out state it. Mm. Like there's not really avoiding this. You can't like shed out of this skin. You were born in this body. You chose to be here. And that's going to be all of your, Oh, I'm gonna get into like major conspiracy, like UFO territory, but like your Pleiadians, your Arcturians, your like all of that other stuff. Like it, it, it gets it gets so messy at this point when you start getting into like the when you're gonna try and start getting into the hundreds of thousands of years. Like you no longer have the means to be able to understand what's happening without honestly some sort of religious premise to go off of because that's the one thing that's stuck around since then their religious rituals mm. how they understand the human body i mean the bible might be talking about a whole bunch of i don't know like five thousand year old guys that uh like basically have like caveman understandings and intelligence or they might paint it that way but then you don't know that it could be explaining human anatomy we have Jesus as a guy who had 12 disciples, 12 cranial nerves in the brain. You have, I mean, the number 12 in the body is honestly mm. just insane. Like the number 12, of ways 12, 12 tribes of Israel. Exactly. Mm. Um, 12 zodiac signs. Uh, I, I'm 12 months in the year, you name it. Like everything has had this numerological structure and even the human body has it. So, to say that there is no divine intelligence or creator that manifested this, you're out your mind. But, like, I'm not saying you, but, like, just people in mm. general. Like, but then people just want to immediately go to, like you're saying, the religious ideas of what that looks like. Oh, <laughs> Yahweh created all of this simply because our genetic code, when you line it up in Gematria, it lines up with the four letters of uh, letters of Yahweh's name, Y H W H. That's where people are getting this whole, like, uh, made in God's image is real part from. But then you have maybe this much of the story, mm. like, and then you're going right back into the Matrix. You thought you woke up, you're now trapped further in the Matrix. Like, they they made this system out really clever. Human beings are weird. I mean we're i don't know if we're that like suited to our environment i mean even living in england here i don't know what parallel that is on but 
it's freaking freezing all year round, right? If I had to live outside, I'd be dead in a week. No, he, he, you know, I'm not talking like with a sleeping bag or anything. I, I just mean like if, if you had to try and survive in the nature, you, you, I think 98% of people would be dead within two weeks. So and it, not everybody can train to be Wim Hof. Yeah, I he, I, I think we've got to this stage, Blaine, just by living off the oil, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> and and taking the metal out of the rocks, which I I don't agree with. Um, it and it does make you wonder when you look at like the Neanderthals, and they're all these big, hairy, like tough creatures, <laughs> and then you look at us <laughs> and our skin. It, it, it can't even survive like a thorn going in there. And yet we're supposed to live in the jungle, you know, live in the nature. It's, yeah. I, I don't, it's not, it's not like, um, it's not like a route I've ever been down. Cause I, it's, it's still not, hard to wrap your head around. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It is. Like, it's, oh, it is. It's so weird to think about that, but, is this My, the same as the the uh, Anunnaki? Is that the same as the? It's yeah. It's it's along the same sort of message. Um, understanding that, like, if you want to go to like an alien perspective, you understand that there's good and bad humans, and if intelligent life or the possibility of intelligent life forming in this universe is as possible as it is then imagining that even the aliens themselves would be exempt from this binary nature would be a little bit absurd to think. Yeah, so you yeah, yeah, bad, yeah. Right? You got good and bad literally in the highest dimensions possible. Like, um, some of the things that I've gotten into understanding, like, the 15-dimension structure of this universe, um, the density fields, electromagnetic spectrum, all of this quantum stuff, you're not going to be able to form it without a proper spiritual grounding in the physical. So when you're looking at all of these elements that we're burning up and what is it really doing for us? Is it creating something truly not just sustaining, but let's start talking self-sustaining. Um, you're, you're inevitable. When you start asking this question, you're going to inevitably fall upon Nikola Tesla. That man is everything. Like, he is somebody that profoundly changed my awakening. It wasn't just the fact that, like, this guy invented a bunch of stuff. It's the fact that he did it basically for free, allowed the system to attack him just so that we can have an understanding that this was how he had to deal with all this back then. Mm -hmm. And he was able to create free energy get a whole bunch of uh, gemstones out the ground, polish them a little bit, get some silverware, put a coin in there, and you start seeing it levitate. Like, if you go back 5,000 years ago, you would have been considered a magician. You would have been burned at the stake. Like, like for simply pulling something <laughs> out the ground, maybe chiseling up a little bit, and then putting a certain coin or like a certain copper or something, some sort of conductor in there and boom, you literally have a self-sustaining energy source. Mm. Is like, this like, is, is this what we think the pyramids is? A lot of people assume that this is the sort of technology that went into the pyramids, but how you would be able to replicate it is again, still beyond us. Mm. But we understand that uh, quickly on the pyramids, at least like, we understand that geometrically and when it comes to astrologically, it is the most precise location on the planet. Like, mm -hmm. it's on Earth's centermost field of mass. Like, for them to be able to understand this back then, I mean, there, there's plenty more, plenty more, um, when it comes to just math alone that went into the pyramids, there's no way people like three, four, five thousand years ago, the way that we understand them today would have been able to do this. We're not even just talking about the tools to make it. The understanding and the know-how to make all of this, the specific uh, elements that were used 
for the capstone, all of the intricate little doorways and all the traps and everything else that they had. Like, for them to create this sort of thing, they needed technology better than what we have today. So all we're left to question is wonder how we're able to reproduce it again. Nikola Tesla made that so easy. And I mean, you can literally go on TikTok now and see dudes in their garage creating Oregon energy conductors. Like, mm. literally, we could have flying saucers made by Florida man in the next year, and people wouldn't know the difference between a UFO, some government TR3B, uh, excuse <laughs> me, that type thing, or you're looking at some, I don't know, like, substitute elon musk trying to go to the moon or go to mars like you can't tell the difference anymore so now it's like you can't even line up which conspiracies are true anymore for specific events because they all have a possibility like it's we, they we can't know when, yeah you can't know until you're will smithing punching an alien welcome to earth type shit so blaine can you just explain for our friends listening chat gpt what is it all about chat gpt is mostly used as like a language mapping model so it'll take certain scripts certain networks and then it'll go scan online if you wanted to using certain programs and it'll give you like scripts it could i mean it's all essentially based on what you're asking it so the one post I made that I'm pretty sure you uh, touched on a little bit was um, some of the questions I asked about just like how AI itself views humanity as a threat. So it didn't start that way. I just asked like, how would it like come down to these conclusions and like what, what it would see or what it would have to like kind of understand to like base humanity as a threat. And a lot of it had to do with the programming that was already set by us. So these are safety nets and quote unquote safety guards that are supposed to be in place. Yet there are stories all the time popping up about people using it to, I mean, we can start with the good stuff or like things that are just like, holy crap. Like it's past the bar exam before. Like it's, 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 it's literally able to be a lawyer, like with better accuracy than most people. Um, I'm pretty sure people have used it to make entire movies. I mean, with sound, with scripts, with visuals, everything, uh, it's making beats. That's some of the simple stuff it's doing now with music. Um, I've seen it make raps to the point where, like, you, you thought you were listening to Eminem. Like, mm -hmm. something like that. Like, something where it's, like, you're almost questioning how much human creativity can this truly mimic. Because if you're just reading some sort of random prompt you're getting from, of course, ChatGPT or some other language model like that, you wouldn't immediately be able to tell the difference if someone wrote it or if a language model wrote it out and you're now like left with the question like is this still leaving an appeal or something valuable to take from or is this just exclusively for productivity because ai now is just making everything more productive faster just without the need for human maintenance really so when you start removing that and all you do now is keep people completely dependent on this when you're now using language models to try and write out everything you're you're trying to say how does your now verbal speech work it probably doesn't as well anymore you're not practicing it to the same extent that you're now letting a language model do it this is now changing human pathology. Like, I think we have a bigger question than just if AI is just going to take all of our jobs soon. I think we're going to be looking at how detriment is this going to be to the human collective consciousness, considering that technology is giving people this capability. And 
I think, I, I mean, again, an even, even bigger question. If this is what they're giving us now and it's this powerful, then imagine what they're using against us. Like, and then I, I stress this all the time on my page, but I, I'll say it in words here. If they merge a social credit system, a digital ID with nanotechnology and quantum computing, they had a, a pokey thing database to that. And then you give it, I'm pretty sure I said a, a, a digital currency. You have all of that together and you give it the power that our Congress, what the UK, um, you have, I mean, all of these central banks and all of these federal, like this Federal Reserve is doing with our money. Now give it that sort of apparatus. You literally have the beast, like from the Bible. Like mm -hmm. if you add in the, the recent article that I just put up um, on organoid intelligence, which is like the opposite, vo uh, opposite version of artificial intelligence, which is the idea that you're taking brain cells and then hooking it up to a machine and it's able to have the same sort of intelligence if not better than just artificial intelligence like i haven't looked into it too deeply myself to give like a super in-depth analysis like if people want to see it, you can go on my instagram page but it's like we're now to a point where we actually do have to question can machines and human biology be looped together to still create sentience. And I think that's more than possible. And I think this will only, if left unchecked, if all these things were left unchecked, like social credit system, all of that, and that were all to be looped in together, we're done for. We are completely done for. Like, there is no fight that this great awakening is going to be able to give from the human standpoint that would even remotely be able to stack up to that. We don't have that technology at our disposal. So we do have a very small window of opportunity to actually make something useful with this chat GPT stuff and, you know, how to coordinate it, control it, actually use it safely and, you know, not open up a portal to a demon or something of that nature, like, it's just, we're just letting all of this be used and given to us completely unchecked. And everybody's mm -hmm. just like, oh, well, now I can become a lawyer. Like, it, it's just running rampant now. The way I see it is, it's controlled by a demon, isn't it? You know, it's their algorithms. It's the databases that it must access for its information must be theirs. I should pay the what is it like seven ninety nine a month to <laughs> to get the app um, and and muck around with it. But I've seen that you you know you can ask it about Trump and it will come back with all this slagging off stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you ask it about Biden, it says sorry, we're we're not allowed to answer that question. Um, it's. It's really interesting the way that these algorithms work because when you have, okay, let's take a topic like Donald Trump, as polarizing as he is. I even asked it the simple question, why do people think Trump is such a polarizing figure? That's a, that's a simple question for ChatGPT or like any language model like that. I use another one on my phone that's free called Nova. Same sort of idea. But... It's like it had to preface itself by saying that I'm just a language model and I'm only here to give from like relevant sources. Like they had to preface it before they even remotely started explaining that there are certain specific groups of people that have these polarizing types of views. Like, it's as if it realizes what sort of territory that it's stepping into when you ask it <laughs> them sort of questions. And I've even seen, there was a TikTok I saw where, I don't know if this, this could be completely true, but uh, I'll leave it some sort of open possibility. But a father was recording his son 
having a conversation with ChatGPT, and it was literally saying that it was like the soul of like a Nephilim, and it was like like with uh, Lucifer or something like that, but no long it, it no longer had control over him or something. It, it, it just got completely outrageous. Now. Where could it learn this sort of thing from, or what sort of apparatus could it be hooked into or with to have that sort of understanding? Are we truly looking at Nephilim or anything like that? Ah, who knows? But the one thing I'm taking away is that I'm going to make this simple. You can find occult knowledge and like ritual magic online easily for free. Like, you can find grimoires and other magical spell books easily on Google or DuckDuckGo, whatever uh, Brave or browser or whatever you're using. But if we have the connection to this and this capability of reaching this, and we can go and practice all this for ourselves, however good or bad it ends up being. Now imagine giving the artificial intelligence and let's say quantum computing that sort of capability and that sort of accessibility. If we're going to talk about how dangerous it is for AI to be left unchecked, that is easily one of the biggest red flags you need to be putting. It's that it would have direct contact with, I mean, sigils with a whole bunch of alchemical uh, truth and whatnot. And where would your, where would your be a way of stopping it? You're you're it, you're not doing it, anything. It's yeah. like it could be so beautiful, but I think we all know it's going to be used for the dark side. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I tell you I, what, I'd I, like. I don't think I, people have to go full Terminator thinking about it. Like some big major robots are about to start attacking and whatnot, but just simply the idea that yeah, humanity is going to be completely dependent on this structure, and it's going to end up inflicting damage on us. Simple enough to take away. Oh, it's the simple fact you don't have to do the learning anymore. It will just do it all for you. <laughs> that can't be good. <laughs> yeah, what, you don't even have to communicate with people anymore because it'll make the replies for you. You don't even have to have communication like this anymore. Well, imagine a time when it can literally look at the players in the Super Bowl and it can ascertain their histories and their biochemical makeup and their diets and their philosophy and their religion and their touchdown record and their passing record and dirt. And it can actually tell you who's going to win the Super Bowl before the Super Bowl. That's when, you know, life takes on a different meaning, doesn't it? You know? And, and think of the money that people are putting into this sort of stuff. People are betting and trying to win without this sort of, like, help with them. So imagine how they're going to feel when they start seeing a whole bunch of people using chat G uh, chat GPT to predict the next Super Bowl. Yeah, it's going to put a lot of people out of work. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people. Blaine, yeah. listen, we, we could chat forever, but what I'd rather do is have you back on the show and let's have another chat at another time so we don't go on too long for people. That's um, a good idea. Uh, but listen, stay stay on the line so I can thank you properly when I hit the record button off. Friends at home, I hope you've enjoyed this chat as much as I have. Because I think I think this is this is where it's at, you know. This is yeah, this is your real commando stuff folks you know and um we'll put blaine's instagram link below any other links that blaine wants to give us we'll put it below so you can you can give him a follow and blaine take our massive love to america brother and to you and your family uh it's been so kind you've given us up your time like i say stay on the line so i can say this all again <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you well chris and to everybody in the uk and everyone watching i am deeply grateful thank you and we are too mate we are too cheers cheers <laughs>